What's the creepiest, most obsessive thing you have ever done? I really like this girl in 8th grade but was barely friends with her. I was a damn good artist at the time, so I asked her what her favorite animal was. That night, I spent 3 hours drawing a dolphin bursting from the surf. Put it in an envelope and gave it to her the next day. I was so nervous I slipped into the recess crowd and disappeared before she could even open it. Not me, but a friend of mine used to kill wasps in every imaginable way when he was younger. He then cut off their heads and glued them on a sheet of paper. He had dozens of these sheets, all very accurately lined. Every sheet had the exact same number of wasp heads glued to it. He kept the sheets in an especially labeled folder and showed them to his guests. He was very proud of his accurate collection. I dated a girl with a fantastic ass, the kind of ass that launches a 1000 ships. She had one specific pair of shorts that were my favorite by far. Once I told her this she stopped wearing them around me, seriously not even once. About 9 months later as our relationship was starting to fall apart, she was in love with her cheating ex, long story, I went into her house when she wasn't home and stole them. If I couldn't enjoy them he sure as hell won't. About 2 years ago, the lovey-dovey friendship that I had with this guy I liked pretty much ended. After that, I couldn't get over it so I would always get texting apps and text him from those numbers. I would also create a fake profile on whatever site it was that he was on and pretend to be someone else just so I could talk to him. It eventually got to the point where I would beg my friend to invite him to a party whenever I was at her house playing Xbox just so I could hear his voice. This shit lasted for about 7 months until a couple of my friends held an intervention for me and told me to get my shit together. Now that I look back to it, I cringe so hard. One time a mutual friend kind of guy I had a crush on ended up on is anyone up? When that was still a thing, I found his Facebook, didn't even add him but just messaged him with your dick is really nice. No response, pretended not to know me the next time we saw each other. I'm just sighing over and over as I type this. Years ago, I used to walk into an office that I didn't work at every Tuesday at lunch and I would pretend that I belonged there. I would wear a suit comb my hair neatly and I would have a briefcase or a newspaper in my hand. Then I would go into the dining room and eat the food that they had stored in the fridge. Bob, and Robert. I don't know if it was the same guy, but I would only eat the food with the name Bob and Robert written on it. I even had conversations with some of the people that worked there. Of course, I would be very cautious and not eat the food in front of them, but whenever I got the chance and I was alone, I would eat it. I sat in the dining room. Read the newspaper had some coffee from the coffee machine they had in there, and I would just belong. Nobody questioned me. For 90 days I did this. For every person I've had a crush on, I would snoop through Facebook obsessively. I'd go through all the photos, statuses, and even music choices. Then, I would take the information I knew, and strike up conversation about those things and manipulate the conversation so that the person would like me more. It worked once, with my current boyfriend. Kind of goes along with fart fetish guy, but opposite. When I was younger, age 14 or so, I thought it was awesome to fart on a crush. I sat next to a few different girls I liked and I would stealthily knock their pencils off the desk so they would bend down behind me to pick them up and just as their face was ass level I would fart, get hard, ask to go to bathroom, fap. No, I don't think it's hot anymore. I was the ducking weirdest kid in middle school. Totally normal in elementary, and pretty okay now, but ducking weird in middle school. I had very few friends, and I wasn't quite Katie Holds Up Spork, but I was close or at least I thought I was. And I was not cute. At all. Despite this, I was rather boy crazy. I was in love with someone new every other week. In 8th grade, before camera phones were a thing, my school had a camera day where everyone could take pictures for posterity and whatnot. I had a disposable camera, and used every one of the 24 exposures to take pictures of my current crush, Nick. One or two of them were from the front, but most were taken from behind or through the books in the library. I called them my Nickshires. I had my parents take me to Walmart that evening to get them developed as soon quickly as possible, and then brought them to school to show everyone. What. The. Duck. I was dating a guy in the military, and let's just say it wasn't for me. Every time he went away I assumed he was having a grand time with the female officers. Since we shared a Verizon account, 
I would look at the phone numbers he called slash texted and call them on a throwaway phone I bought at Walmart. So in addition to the regular phone bill, I was paying $50 per month for a secret phone that I used solely for the purpose of calling the numbers he contacted. Most of the time it would go to voicemail and I would hear that it was one of his buddies. I never caught him cheating but my paranoia was still high when he was absent for weeks at a time. I was obsessed with my English teacher in my junior year of high school. We're not talking about like a little crush, I would stalk her. On more than one occasion I walked out of my study hall to go to the bathroom. I would actually go to her, always unlocked and vacant, room and masturbate. I cried every time afterwards. Years ago this girl friended me on LiveJournal, and she had posted a lot of personal information. I used that information to figure out who she was, where she worked, and where she lived. I spent about a month trailing her, figuring out her schedule. Then I broke into her apartment while she was at work and rearranged the furniture. It wasn't anything sexual. I was practicing the skills necessary to be an assassin, hitman or serial killer. I used to repeatedly drive by the house of a female friend. She was going out with my best friend when I first started, and I drove by even more after they broke up. She lived in a rural area out of town on a dead-end street. The only reason for me to be on that street, hell, to be out that way at all, was to drive past her house. Then I made her this crappy photo album with pictures from a trip we'd all taken together, wrote her a really creepy letter expressing my love for her and sent it to her at college shortly after she'd started her freshman year. I never heard back from her about the photo album or the letter. We've seen each other briefly a few times over the years and chatted a little bit. I feel ducking awful every time I see her but she's always nice. I give her credit for not telling me to duck off and get away from her. The worst part is that I knew what I was doing was wrong and creepy the entire ducking time. Every time I drove past her house, the whole time I was making the photo album and writing the letter, but I couldn't stop myself. In high school, our computer login passwords were some combination of first name middle initial, and last name. Well, the dude I was crushing on casually mentioned he didn't have a middle name, which made it ridiculously easy to figure out his password. I access his account and create a Word document that I saved there. I can't remember exactly what it said but it was something along the lines of, you're hot. He found it and responded with wanna bang? Of course I said yes, but he didn't respond after that. It's been 9 years since I did that and I'm still friends with the guy but I have no idea if he knows it was me. Back in middle school, I was crushing on this one girl. At first I didn't even know her name, and, well, I wasn't exactly the best looking or most socially connected guy at school, so that put a damper on things. I did, however, work in the school library, and was very well acquainted with their computer systems. One day, her class came into the library while I was manning the checkout system, and one book withdrawal later I knew her name. A day later, I punched her name into the computer system bringing up all of her personal information and her entire library record. For the next few months, I stalked her apartment and made a note of everything I could find out about her and her family. It all ended after a confrontation with her father, and looking back on it I'm incredibly ashamed of what I've done. I once learned everything there is to know about the Peloponnesian War, Russian, Irish and Persian history from the 12th century onwards and every boring ass book ever written by Will Self. Why? because a boy I knew had them on his Amazon account. Turned out it wasn't his Amazon account. When I was a teen, I was full-on obsessed with the paper boy, who was a cool grunger guy a few years older than me. I used to have an alarm set on my digital watch to go off about 5 minutes before he'd usually come by, which I would still have set whilst away on holiday. I once hid in a bush in the front garden to get a better vantage point while my friend took a photo of him for me from the upstairs window. I regularly played music by bands I knew he liked with my window open when he arrived. I engineered conversations with my mom and friends for him to overhear that made me sound cool, which for some reason they went along with. I'd get all dressed up then conveniently leave the house as he was approaching, only to just hide round the corner and go back into the house when he was gone. There were loads of other lame things like that. This carried on for a year or two. He must have known, but never made fun of me to people we both knew or anything. We have some friends in common now and I see him socially, and now I cannot believe how I ever thought of him as the most attractive and coolest guy I'd ever seen. He's really not my type now. We never normally chatted, but during his last week of being a paperboy he asked if I wanted to come and see his band's gig, which wasn't a bad way for my weird obsession to end, 
after that it turned into a bit more of a normal crush because then I could talk to him a bit more, and it stopped being this massive thing in my head. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit Streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.